Can we learn to be strong even when we're vulnerable? Does vulnerability equate fear, equal fear? Because since you're vulnerable, you could be hurt. And since you could be hurt, there's fear of being hurt. But we're going to discuss here that vulnerability does not equate, is not equal to fear, because vulnerability is actually a very good thing if you're in a trusting environment. You know, a, a, new, a, a, a child in its mother's womb is very vulnerable, more vulnerable than will ever be a, a, in life on earth, because it's fragile, the fetus is fragile, completely dependent on its mother, it does not have the capacity to function on its own, it can't breathe, can't eat, can't drink, completely dependent, completely vulnerable. However, it's completely protected as well. And the embryonic fluids gets exactly what it needs, and therefore a fetus does not have fear because it is being provided for. Even if the mother is a neurotic, and even if the mother has a lot of psychological issues and is dysfunctional, that the way God made it is that the fetus will be protected more or less from that. Obviously, I don't even describe more horrific situations where a mother is ingesting drugs or she has such trauma that it will affect even the fetus. I'm talking a more normal circumstance. Extreme circumstances are extreme circumstances. To say that a fetus is completely invulnerable is not correct. I mean, you know, there is health issues and uh, there is, uh, unfortunately, miscarriages and there are other things that can happen. But we're talking about all things equal and considered a, a, a fetus is very much vulnerable, but also very protected. Now, we wish it would continue that way once the child emerges. If the parents are healthy parents and functional parents, they'll make sure that though a child is fragile and vulnerable, especially in the early years, that child will get everything it needs. I mean, just look at a gardener, a good gardener, tending to his or her garden. Look at the care. Imagine now a child. If we indeed, our parents were gardeners, what would we be like? We'd be caring for every detail. Now, good mothers and fathers will do exactly that. They'll be good gardeners. What are they doing? They're protecting the vulnerable child from outside forces, from danger, from predators, from uh, anything that could hurt the child. Now, imagine, God forbid, a scenario where parents are not doing that. The gardener ends up becoming someone that can hurt is his or her own garden, that's a quite a tragedy, you know. And unfortunately, we see much of that, parents who hurt their own children. Whether it's intentional or unintentional is not the issue here. We're not discussing that topic. I'm just talking about the reality that many children growing up today do not have that type of protection. So you can rest assured that that child growing up is going to be afraid of, of relationships, is going to be afraid of vulnerability because his vulnerability was not always protected. And you can rest assured the other way around, that a child growing up with such a gardener, such gardeners, protected will be very comfortable being vulnerable with the right people. So vulnerability is not a problem. Vulnerability is actually the real you. The real you, taken stripped of our life experiences where we may have been hurt, is vulnerable. So what? So what's wrong with being vulnerable? It's only wrong with being vulnerable is when there, when there are enemies and predators and those that could hurt us. To be vulnerable and no one else is on this earth, what's the problem with that? The problem is only when, as I said, there's no protection. And worse than that, there are forces that can hurt us.